launch Unreal Engine, click on Games, blank, and then give your project a name. In my case, it's going to be Motion Graphics Cup. Click on Create. Once Unreal Engine starts on the top right, click on Settings, Plugins, and then up here in the search bar type Motion. You want to go ahead and enable Motion Design. Unreal is going to give you a warning. Click Yes, and then Restart Now. Once Unreal restarts, File, New Level, choose Empty Level, and then click on Create. Let's go ahead and save our level. As always, I'm going to right click and make a new folder, call it Maps. And inside here, I'm just going to name this Motion Graphics Cup. All right. Once your level's been saved, enable Motion Design Mode by clicking on this button, and then click on the Create Defaults button. This is going to give you some lights and cameras to get you started, and then save your level. Next, I'm going to open the Content Drawer, right click, make a new folder, and call this Meshes. Next, you want to import the meshes that we've linked in the description below. You can do this by right-clicking and choosing import to whatever folder you're currently in. The other way you can import meshes in Unreal is simply drag and drop the FBX files into the folder that you're in like this. Choose reset to default and then click on import all. Now we've given you three meshes, two of them are walls and one is a trophy. I'm going to double click on the wall A to open it in the static mesh editor. You can see it's a very simple wall that kind of bends 90 degrees. I've also given you a wall that has a slightly beveled turn, so it's a smoother curve here, and a trophy mesh. Now when you're done inspecting your models, close all your windows and click on this button here indicating you have four unsaved files and the floppy disk icon on the top left to save your level. All right. Let's drag wall A into our environment and reset its position by clicking on this arrow over here. I'm gonna reset the position of default scene as well and unlock my camera so I can fly around the level. Select your wall, press the F key to focus on it. And just a note here for everyone, if you mouse wheel zoom in, you'll see this blue line on the up and the left here, indicating that you have zoomed in. So if you see those blue lines, mouse wheel down to zoom back out, and then you'll get kind of this full viewport. Click on your content drawer, navigate to the content folder, and once again, make a new folder here. Name it Textures. Double click to go inside this folder, and then drag and drop the texture we've provided in the description below. It's a very simple black and white lines texture, no alpha. Each line has this randomized brightness or luminance that I made in Substance Designer. Now let's take a look at the new Material Designer in 5.4. This is an artist-friendly way to author materials. Open the designer by clicking this button here. This will either pop up or show up on the right here, like this. Now it's very important that you first click on the mesh that you want to make a material for, and then click on Create Material on the right here. Now I'm just going to spend a moment here to discuss this interface as it is new to 5.4. To the upper left here, you have the Surface and Post Process Selector. To the right of this, you have the Blend Mode, so your standard Unreal Engine Blend Modes, Opaque, Mask, Translucent, Additive. Animated and unlit is on the right here. This is the global opacity of this material. Now, since it comes with a texture layer by default, you have two squares here. One is the texture itself and one is the alpha. Now let's talk about the different types of layers you can make. To make a new layer, click on this green plus on the bottom right. You can see there is a texture like we have, a texture no alpha. And you can see if I create a texture layer, it's exactly what we started off with. So by default, Unreal gives you a texture with an alpha layer. Right? So let's go ahead and make a solid color. I'm just showing you some more examples here. Solid color just has a solid color on the left side. So I can click on the square and I can change the color to like kind of red. So click okay here. And you can see there's a range of layers you can make like an atlas, a texture edge color, scene texture, gradient, and even a material function. Now I'm gonna click on this alpha here and I'm gonna change its type from a texture to a radial gradient by clicking on texture and then choosing radial gradient. Now this is working just like you'd expect it to. Wherever there's white, we're seeing that solid color come through. Wherever there's black on our alpha texture, that is being hidden. Now there's a white dot to the left of the texture and the alpha. Clicking it disables either the texture or the alpha. So what we've gone ahead and done here is created a texture no alpha layer, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and re-enable it. Now let's talk about UV link, what it is, how to use it. Let's change our solid color to a texture by clicking on solid color, clicking on color, and then texture. You can see our texture has been applied. Now note, the UV link, the chain is on, right? So let's make this a little bigger. And you can see I can translate my texture and my alpha is also translating. Now let's go ahead and reset this by clicking on this arrow over here and I'm gonna disable the UV link. Now when I translate my texture, my alpha doesn't move. In fact, it gets its own controls. So I can change the scale, the offset, and I can move this alpha around independently of the texture. 
So to wrap up, to the upper right here, you have the opacity slider for each layer and a blend mode drop down menu. Now let's use the material designer to make an animated background texture. I'm gonna start off by deleting the layers and adding just a blue, very dark kind of base solid color like this. Next, create a new texture layer. Click on the texture and navigate to the folder where you imported the lines texture. We're going to use the lines texture as our texture and our alpha like this. Now each of the layers comes with its own stack of effects. So I'm going to click on this effects icon here, distort and slant. This is gonna let me slant my texture, right? So let's unfold this, click on slant, and now you can set up some parameters. So I'm gonna use 0.5 here. Now panners can be used as well. So UV, UV panner, the spans are UV. So I'm just gonna click on UV panner. The U multiplier is going to be set to zero. I'm just gonna change this to zero. And we're gonna set the V multiplier to negative five. So you can see our texture is now moving across this plane vertically. Now let's add our trophy mesh to the scene. So just drag and drop it here. And I'm gonna put snapping on and rotate it so that it's facing the camera. Now I'm going to use the overlay visibility button over here to ensure that we're getting all of that background plane in our camera, you know, we're not seeing any black areas. Once you've got a frame that you're happy with, click on this button right here, bookmark, set bookmark zero. That way, if you move around and you hit the zero key on your keyboard, you'll snap back to this view. In the motion design outliner, delete your direction light and your skylight. Select your post-process volume, unfold exposure, and set the compensation to nine. Also override the metering mode and set it to manual. This is going to disable auto exposure so we can light better. Now let's do some very basic three point lighting. I'm going to put down a rec light, rotate it to make sure it's working, and then right click on the same light in the motion design outliner and add a look at modifier. Click on the modifier to open the operator stack and here you can specify which actor it has to look at. Do remember to flip this otherwise it won't work. Now you can see as I move this light it's always facing the cup. The light we have already is going to be our backlight. Alt and drag to create your fill light. Note all the modifiers carry over. And finally, Alt and drag one last time to create your key light. Now I'm going to change the color of the backlight to a cold blue. So we have this blue rim around our cup, right? So just click OK here. Now to see it better, I'm going to actually turn off the fill and the key lights. So we can see this is what it looks like. This is the intended view. Actually, I'm going to view this through our camera. Now for our fill light, we're going to use a contrasting color to the blue. So I'm going to use an orange here, a warmer color. But for our key light, we're going to go with a similar blue to what we have for our backlight. For our materials, we're going to be using the Quixel Megascan. So window, Quixel Bridge, you may need to sign in once again with your Epic Games account in this window that opens here. On the left, choose surfaces because that's what we're looking for. And I'm just going to search for black space metal. From the results that show up, choose a material that you like. I chose this iron material over here. Select the quality that you'd like to use. Download it once it's downloaded. Click on this blue add button over here. And from the window that pops up, just drag the material and drop it on your static mesh. If you want to modify any Quixel Megascan, just double click on the material instance. This is going to allow you to override properties, such as what I'm doing here with the minimum roughness. Just increasing it to give our, you know, our trophy a little bit of a better look and feel. It was too shiny before. Now you can use the material designer for the cup as well. Create the material, change the blend mode to opaque and make sure you uncheck unlit. Now we're gonna disable the alpha, change our texture to a solid color. You can choose any color you want here. The problem is you can't set PBR values here. So you'll have to select your cup, press this button on the upper right and choose open in UE material editor. Here you can dial in your metal, specular and roughness values and then click apply. So for now, if you wanna change your PBR values, this is how you can do it for the material designer. For our background, we're gonna choose the uppermost layer, expand the FX stack and add a color tint here. Select your newly added color tint. I'm gonna use 20 on the red and 2.5 on the green to give us an orange. Next, disable UV link. Select your texture and offset at 0.1 on the X to give us this really interesting look here. I'm also going to scale down my alpha to give us more lines, right? So we'll do 0.5 here. And you can see we have these smaller lines now showing up. Select the uppermost layer, Control D to duplicate it. Expand your FX stack, and I'm gonna use the color tint to just change this from an orange to a blue. So let's reset this. And I'm just gonna dial in these values here, increase these values till you get this really nice electric blue. After you have a secondary color you like, select the texture and now offset it 0.2. So this is one of the strengths of the material designer. Very quickly, we're playing around with layers and getting a look that we want. Now I'm gonna duplicate the uppermost layer and rotate it 90 to do some even more interesting things with it. We're gonna take down the opacity to make it a little bit more subtle 
And then I'm gonna change the color to like a red. So once again, FX stack, color tint, we're gonna use just one in the red, zero on the green, zero on the blue. And let's just also raise the opacity up to 0.5, just so we can get these red dots coming through. Now to add contrast and emphasis to a certain part of our background, we're going to add a radial gradient. Select your newly added radial gradient and use the multiply blend mode. This is going to add a whole lot more contrast to your scene. So you can scale it down and you can offset it like this. For text, I'm going to be using a text act. And if you're like me and the text ends up in the middle of nowhere, that's okay. I want my text next to this cup. So select the cup, expand your details panel and shift right click on the location. Now place your text actor, select it and shift left click on the location. This is going to then copy and paste its value. So we'll just change the text here to first place. Choose a font that you like. I'm gonna use a font from the first video, one that I cannot pronounce. I'm gonna make sure that max height is on along with scale proportionately. And then I'm just going to specify where I want my text and how wide or how large it's going to be. And so I think 36 is fine. For the material on this text, we're going to use the material designer. So navigate down here and choose custom material. Then click on create with material designer, change the texture to a solid color over here like this. I'm just gonna use a very bright orange. I think I can go brighter like so. Now I'd like this text to glow. So I'm going to add a FX color glow. Once again, expand your FX text, select the glow, and I'm just gonna change these values until I get a nice warm orange glow. Not too yellow, not too red, something like a nice orange neon glow, like this. Now let's make a diamond behind our cup. So I'm gonna use the 2D shapes, ring, and shift and drag so you get a perfect circle. I'm gonna shift, click again to paste the location so it's just above the cup, and down here is where you can change the sizing of the ring. So I'm just gonna push it back a little bit. Just make it a little smaller, put snapping off here. All right, so we're just gonna make it a little bigger and I'm just gonna turn down the thickness like this, right? So 0.9 and use four on the sides here so we get a diamond, right? So now you can play around with the sizing until you find something that you like. I want it to be slightly further back and maybe a little larger like this. I'm gonna move our text a little to the right Try to center it as much as you can. And now we're gonna use the material designer for our diamond. So change the material type from simple to material designer, and then change your texture to a solid color like this. So I'm just gonna use a very bright blue like this. And to add glow to this, we're gonna use the same technique as mentioned before. So effects, color, glow. Expand your effects stack, select glow, and now you can dial in the numbers you want, right? So I'm going for, a, once again, a very electric neon sort of glow. Some other ideas, control D to duplicate your diamond shape. Just place it at the back here and take down the inner size. One of the other great things about shapes in Unreal 5.4 is that you can make instantaneous changes. So let's take down the opacity like this to give it that interface sort of look. Some concluding thoughts here on the final piece. I swapped the colors on the lights illuminating our cup. I moved the orange one to the right so it would sit in better with this glowing orange text also on the right. To make the light blue outline around our diamond a little bit more interesting, I'm using the same technique we used in the background. So we have that same texture applied and we have a UV banner effect added to it. As always, thanks for watching this video, everyone. Let us know in the comments what you thought about it. Give us a like, give us a sub if you found this content interesting. There's ways to support the channel in the description of this video. And we will see you in the next one.